Why do we as humans come in so many different skin colours? This question has puzzled scientists, historians and philosophers alike for centuries. Today, we're going to embark on a journey to uncover the answers. We'll explore the fascinating science behind the spectrum of our skin hues, the intriguing story of our ancestors' migration and adaptation, and the profound social implications our skin colour has in our societies. From the role of melanin and UV radiation, to the historical context of race and the significance of movements like Black Lives Matter, we'll delve deep into the complexities and beauty of our diverse skin tones. This is not just a journey of understanding the science, but also a journey of appreciating the diversity and exploring the social constructs around us. So fasten your seatbelts and open your minds as we unravel the intriguing story of our skin colors. The color of our skin is determined by a pigment called melanin. Intriguing, isn't it? This pigment produced by cells in our skin called melanocytes protects our skin from the harmful effects of the sun's ultraviolet rays. The more melanin we have, the darker our skin. Conversely, the less melanin we have, the lighter our skin. But why do we have different amounts of melanin? Well, it's a fascinating tale of survival and adaptation. You see, humanity's early ancestors who lived near the equator, where the sun's rays are most intense, had a higher production of melanin to shield them from the harmful effects of the sun. This resulted in darker skin pigmentation. As these early humans spread out and migrated to regions further from the equator, the intensity of the sun's rays decreased. Over generations, less melanin was needed to protect the skin from UV radiation, leading to a decrease in skin pigmentation or lighter skin color. It's a bit like nature's sunscreen, really. The melanin in our skin absorbs and disperses UV rays to protect the deeper layers of our skin. Without it, we would be at a much higher risk of skin damage and diseases like skin cancer. But there's a twist to this tale. While melanin protects against harmful UV radiation, it also reduces the body's ability to produce vitamin D from sunlight. Vitamin D is crucial for our health, aiding in the absorption of calcium and phosphorus and playing a vital role in our immune system. So, there's a bit of a balancing act going on. Our ancestors in sunnier climates needed more melanin to protect against UV damage, but not so much that it prevented vitamin D production. On the other hand, those in less sunny climates required less melanin, allowing for more vitamin D production. And it's not just about sun exposure. Genetic variations also play a role in determining our skin color. These variations can be passed down from generation to generation, resulting in the wide range of skin colors we see today. But remember, these genetic variations are minor when compared to our overall genetic makeup. In fact, all humans share about 99.9% .9 of their DNA. That's right, regardless of our skin color, we are genetically almost identical. So, our diverse skin colors are a result of our ancestors' adaptation to sun exposure. It's a testament to our species' ability to adapt and survive in a wide range of environments, but it's also a reminder that despite our external differences, we are all fundamentally the same, sharing a common ancestry and a shared genetic heritage. Skin color is a perfect example of how humans have adapted to their environment. Our skin is an impressive organ, the largest one we have, and it has adapted over thousands of years to protect us from the harmful effects of the sun. It's a bit like nature's sunscreen, you could say. How does it do this? Well, it all comes down to a pigment called melanin, which gives our skin its color. But here's where it gets interesting. The amount and type of melanin in your skin determines not just your skin color, but also how well your skin can protect itself from harmful ultraviolet radiation or UV rays. The more melanin you have, the darker your skin, and the better it can absorb and scatter these harmful rays. But if you're fair-skinned, don't worry, you're not left out in the cold, or should we say, the sun. Fair skin is better at producing another vital substance, vitamin D. So you see, our skin color is a balancing act between protecting us from UV damage and helping us produce enough vitamin D. And this balance has been shaped by where our ancestors lived. Imagine a world map. Now, think about the equator, the imaginary line that divides the Earth into the northern and southern hemispheres. Here the sun is at its strongest and UV radiation is at its most intense. 
So people from these regions have evolved to have darker skin, rich in melanin, to protect them from the sun's harmful rays. As we move away from the equator towards the poles, the sun's rays become less direct and there's less UV radiation to contend with. People from these regions have evolved to have lighter skin, which is better at producing vitamin D in conditions of lower sunlight. But what about those in-between areas, you might ask? Well, that's where we see a gradient of skin colours from darker to lighter, reflecting the varying levels of sunlight in these regions. It's rather mind-boggling to think that our skin colour is a living testament to our ancestors' geographical locations, isn't it? This adaptation to different levels of sunlight is an example of natural selection at work. Those whose skin was better adapted to their environment were more likely to survive and have offspring. And over time, these advantageous traits became more common in those populations. In other words, our skin colour is a survival story written in the pigment of our skin. But as beautiful as this story of adaptation is, it's important to remember that it's just that, a story of survival. It's not a hierarchy, a ranking, or a measure of worth. Our skin colour is a testament to our shared human capacity to adapt and survive, not a reason to divide or discriminate. In the grand scheme of things, the differences in our skin colours are just a tiny fraction of what makes us human. Genetically speaking, we're all 99.9% .9 identical. That's right, regardless of the colour of our skin, we're far more alike than we are different. From the equator to the poles, our skin colours reflect our ancestors' geographical locations. But they also remind us of our shared human journey. A journey of adaptation, survival and ultimately unity. Because in the end we're all just humans, trying to make it on this beautiful planet we call home. Our ancestors began their journey in Africa, the cradle of humanity. Here, under the relentless rays of the sun, they developed dark skin filled with melanin to protect them from harmful UV radiation. But as they migrated further away from the equator, the intensity of the sunlight reduced. This change in environment led to a fascinating shift in our skin colour. Picture this. Around 70,000 years ago, a group of Homo sapiens ventured out of Africa. As they spread across the globe, they encountered varying climates and levels of sunlight. In regions with less sunlight, there was less need for melanin as a protective shield. Thus, over generations, humans in these regions developed lighter skin, which allowed more sunlight to penetrate their skin and produce the much-needed vitamin D. In contrast, those who continued to live closer to the equator, where the sun's rays were strongest, maintained their darker skin as a natural sunblock. So, the myriad of skin tones we see today, from the deepest ebony to the lightest porcelain, is a testament to our ancestors' migrations and the amazing adaptability of the human species. But here's where things get a bit tricky. Over time, societies began attaching significance to these skin colour variations. The concept of race was born. However, it's important to understand that race is not a biological reality, but a social construct. This means there's no genetic or scientific basis for racial classifications. In fact, genetic research has shown that there's more genetic diversity within so-called races than between them. So, if you randomly pick two people of the same race, there's a good chance they may be more genetically different from each other than from someone of a different race. In the grand scheme of our genetic makeup, skin colour is just a tiny piece of the puzzle. It's akin to classifying cars into races, based on their paint colour while ignoring the myriad of parts that make a car run. Moreover, the concept of race is fluid and varies across cultures and over time. For example, in the United States, the one-drop rule of the early 20th century classified anyone with even a single African ancestor as black, regardless of their skin colour. In contrast, other societies, such as Brazil, have hundreds of classifications for skin colour and racial identities, reflecting the country's mixed heritage. So race, as we understand it, is not rooted in biology, but in societal perceptions. It's a human invention, not a natural division. And like all inventions, it can be used for good or ill. For centuries, this invention has been misused to justify discrimination and inequality, causing untold suffering and division. 
But as we continue to learn more about our shared history and the true science of skin color, we can work towards a future where skin color is seen for what it truly is. A beautiful testament to our shared journey as a species, not a barrier dividing us. Despite the science, skin color has played a significant role in societal structures and identities. Skin color, a mere biological adaptation, has been imbued with extraordinary social significance throughout history. Societies across the world have constructed narratives around skin color, attributing values, behaviors, and identities based on the shades of our skin. Let's take a journey back in time. In ancient civilizations, skin color wasn't a primary factor in societal classification. Many societies were more concerned with class, religion, or territory. However, as explorations and intercontinental interactions increased, the perception of skin color took an unprecedented turn. The transatlantic slave trade in the 15th to 19th centuries marked a dark chapter in human history. It was during this period that skin color began to be used as a justification for enslavement. Africans with their predominantly dark skin were seen as inferior and were subjected to brutal treatments. This was one of the first major instances when skin color was used as a tool for discrimination and dehumanization. Fast forward to more recent times, skin color continues to influence societal structures and identities. In many parts of the world, lighter skin is often associated with beauty, success and privilege, while darker skin is often linked to negative stereotypes. This phenomenon, known as colorism, is prevalent not just in Western societies, but also in Asia, Africa and Latin America. It's evident in the booming market for skin whitening products, in the media representation of beauty and even in everyday interpersonal interactions. It's important to note that this isn't just about individual prejudice. These attitudes are embedded in our systems and institutions. Systemic racism, a form of racism that is embedded as normal practice within society or an organization, can lead to such issues as discrimination in criminal justice, employment, housing, healthcare, political power and education, among other issues. But why does this happen? Why do we ascribe such importance to skin color? The answer lies in a complex interplay of historical, socio-economic and psychological factors. Skin color has been used as a convenient marker to create an us and them, often by those in power to maintain status quo. The impact of these societal attitudes towards skin color is profound. It affects people's self-esteem, mental health and life opportunities. It perpetuates social inequalities and divisions, often leading to conflicts and violence. But there's a silver lining. With the rise of global movements like Black Lives Matter, there's a growing recognition of these issues. There's a renewed commitment to challenge these biases, to celebrate the diversity of human skin colors, and to strive for a more equitable and inclusive society. However, change isn't easy, and it doesn't happen overnight. It requires concerted efforts from all of us. It requires us to confront our own biases, to listen to the experiences of those who have been marginalized because of their skin color, and to take action against all forms of racial discrimination. Education is a powerful tool in this regard. By learning about the science of skin color, by understanding its historical and social context, we can debunk the myths and stereotypes associated with it. We can foster a sense of shared humanity that transcends skin color. In conclusion, skin color is just one aspect of our complex biological identity. It doesn't define our worth or our capabilities. It's a testament to our shared evolutionary journey, a story of adaptation and survival. Yet, it has been used to divide us to create hierarchies of power and privilege. It's critical to recognize these societal patterns to build a more inclusive future. Let's remember that underneath our skin, we're all fundamentally the same. We're all part of the diverse tapestry of humanity. And it's this diversity that makes us stronger, more resilient and more beautiful. One movement that has brought the issue of skin color discrimination to the forefront is Black Lives Matter. As we dive into this topic, it's important to understand that this movement is more than just a hashtag. It's a call to action. It's a plea for justice. It's a demand for equality. The Black Lives Matter movement was born out of pain and frustration. 
It began as a response to the acquittal of Trayvon Martin's killer in 2013. Activists Alicia Garza, Patrice Cullors and Opal Tometi used the power of social media to voice their outrage and the hashtag hash Black Lives Matter was born. But it didn't stop there. The movement quickly expanded beyond the realm of social media, sparking protests and demonstrations across the United States and around the globe. It was a rallying cry, a unifying message for people of all races and backgrounds to stand up against systemic racism and demand change. The Black Lives Matter movement became a beacon of hope and a symbol of resistance. It shone a spotlight on the deeply entrenched issues of racial inequality and injustice that pervade societies worldwide. It forced us to confront the uncomfortable truth that in many ways, the color of one's skin still determines how they are treated in our society. As we navigate through this movement's history, we encounter individuals who have become symbols of the struggle for justice. Names like Michael Brown, Eric Garner, and Freddie Gray have become synonymous with the fight against police brutality. Their stories and countless others are tragic reminders of the systemic racism that exists within our societies. But the Black Lives Matter movement is not just about highlighting the injustices. It's about demanding change. It's about holding those in power accountable. And it's about creating a society where every person, regardless of the color of their skin, is treated with dignity and respect. In recent years, the movement has expanded its focus to include issues like economic inequality, voting rights and education reform. It has also spurred conversations about intersectionality, recognizing that people's experiences of oppression are shaped not only by their race, but also by their gender, sexuality, class and other aspects of their identity. Despite facing backlash and criticism, the Black Lives Matter movement has continued to push forward, inspiring a new generation of activists and allies. It has sparked a global conversation about race and equality, forcing us to examine our own biases and prejudices. It has challenged us to do better, to be better. The Black Lives Matter movement has also highlighted the power of collective action. It's shown us that when people come together, they can affect real, meaningful change. It's reminded us that every voice matters, that every action counts. In the face of adversity, the Black Lives Matter movement stands tall, a testament to the resilience and strength of those who fight for justice. It continues to inspire and mobilize people around the world, pushing us towards a future where the color of one's skin does not dictate their value or their rights. In the context of our discussion about skin color, the Black Lives Matter movement serves as a stark reminder of the social implications of our physical differences. It underscores the urgent need for education and understanding, for acknowledging and celebrating our diversity rather than letting it divide us. The Black Lives Matter movement highlights the urgent need for change and understanding. It reminds us that the fight for equality is far from over, but it also gives us hope. Hope that we can create a world where every person is valued and respected, where the color of one's skin is seen not as a marker of inequality, but as a testament to the beautiful diversity of the human race. Celebrating our skin color diversity is not just about acknowledging differences, but also about understanding. Now, let's delve into why it's important to not only celebrate, but also to understand the diversity of skin color. Every hue of human skin is a testament to our shared evolution, a vibrant tapestry woven by countless generations adapting to their environments. Yet, in our modern world, these beautiful variations have often been misunderstood and misused to divide us. But let's imagine a different perspective, a world where we view skin color for what it truly is, a fascinating scientific adaptation and a testament to our shared human journey. This perspective can only be achieved through education, understanding and recognition of our collective diversity. Across the globe, there are ongoing efforts to combat racism and promote inclusivity. Educational initiatives are being launched to foster understanding of the science and significance of our skin colors. These initiatives aim to dispel myths and misconceptions and replace them with facts and empathy. In classrooms, museums and online platforms, we're seeing more and more resources dedicated to this cause. From interactive exhibits showcasing the genetic factors influencing skin color 
to comprehensive curriculums exploring the historical and social implications of skin pigmentation, knowledge is being shared like never before. These initiatives are not just about imparting information, they're about fostering dialogue, breaking down barriers and building bridges of understanding. They're about challenging stereotypes and encouraging all of us to view skin colour not as a source of division, but as a celebration of our shared humanity. And it's not just in the realm of education where we see this shift. In media, advertising and the arts, there's a growing recognition of the beauty and richness of our skin colour diversity. We're seeing more representation, more voices being heard and more stories being told. This not only enriches our culture, but also helps to challenge and change perceptions. The path to understanding and celebrating our skin colour diversity may be long and challenging. It requires us to confront uncomfortable truths, question long-held beliefs and continually strive for progress. But it's a journey well worth taking. Because when we understand the true significance of our skin colours, when we recognise them as beautiful variations of our shared human heritage, we can begin to dismantle the misconceptions and prejudices that have divided us for too long. In this vein, it's not just about celebrating diversity, but understanding its roots, its implications and its beauty. It's about seeing beyond the surface, beyond the divisions and recognising our shared humanity. Promoting diversity and understanding is a step towards a more inclusive and equitable world. Let's continue this journey together, cherishing our differences, fostering understanding and working towards a world where every hue is celebrated, every voice is heard and every person is valued for their unique contribution to the vibrant tapestry of humanity. In conclusion, our skin colours tell a fascinating story of human adaptation and evolution. They are a testament to our journey as a species, a journey that has taken us across continents through varying climates and into the heart of different cultures. Our skin colours are like a global map, reflecting the paths we've walked, the sun we've basked under and the heritage we carry within our genes. Each shade of human skin is a scientific marvel, a delicate balance of melanin production, a dance between protection and nourishment. It's a dance choreographed by the sun, the UV radiation, the need for vitamin D and our survival instincts. Our skin colours are not just about aesthetics, they are about our resilience and resourcefulness. A testament to how we as a species have adapted to thrive in diverse environments. But beyond the science, our skin colours carry a deeper significance. They are a part of our identities, woven into the fabric of our societies and cultures. They have been used to divide, to categorise, to discriminate, yet they are in essence a reminder of our shared humanity. They are a testament to our capacity for diversity, a celebration of our differences and an affirmation of our shared genetic heritage. In the face of social constructs like race, movements like Black Lives Matter remind us of our shared struggle against prejudice and discrimination. They remind us that our skin colours, while beautifully diverse, do not define our worth or our potential. They remind us that every shade of human skin deserves respect, dignity and equality. As we reflect on the science and significance of our skin colours, let's remember to not just understand, but to appreciate and celebrate this diversity. Let's strive to see our skin colours for what they truly are. A testament to our journey as a species, a celebration of our diversity and a reminder of our shared humanity. In diversity there is beauty and there is strength. We all bleed the same colour. We are one race, the human race. Let this message resonate within us, guiding our actions and our attitudes as we navigate the world in all its beautiful diverse hues.